Join our knowledgeable hosts as they dive into the captivating universe of comic books, movies, TV shows, and pop culture. Get ready for vibrant discussions and a shared enthusiasm for all things superhero and beyond. A comic podcast straight from the panels. This is Beyond the Capes. All right, everyone, welcome back to another episode of Beyond the Cape Podcast. Your host, Ryan, coming back with the boys. Sound off. Hey, everybody, this is Marvel expert, Alex. Hey, everyone, this is Alejandro, your everyday fan. All right, and today we will be talking about essentially the second half of what is one of the best sequels of an animated series to date, as far as I can really say and that is x-men 97 yes um yes man it feels like a long wait for this this whole season and it just went by in the blink of an eye this this um season uh w- was far beyond my expectations i mean it just went there i, I mean I, I think it's like not only does it give it like such a good callback and you know and and um stays true to like the original but it takes it like such a next level you know and such such a step further you know and like it's like now this is like beyond a kid's show i mean like this is definitely like beyond like what we grew up with you know and uh and but what what a just an amazing first season i am not too familiar with the comics but just watching this season you know i did like the story storyline i feel like at least most of the episodes, I think, build up on each one. Um, and, I, you know, definitely the last three episodes you know, are back to back to back. Um, but I'm just excited to talk about the about it with you guys. Definitely. Um, I mean, that, and that's the, be- the beauty of X-Men, um, especially in the when it came out in the 90s, the X-Men, the animated series. If you were not familiar with the comics, you could watch the show. Um, and the show really added up. And the same thing I'd say with X-Men 97. I think a lot of people that kind of forgot about X-Men, the animated series uh, that did go on to watch the season. um, It is okay to just jump into X-Men 97. I think they made it a fair launching, launching off point for those that are not familiar uh, with X-Men. Biggest thing is before we get any further uh, behind Alejandro is special guest of the evening. Our mascot ginger. Man, He's still snapping right now. Look at, look at that. Who can say no to that? Yes. Our, 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 new, <laughs> our new Beyond the Cape mascot. Uh, That's right. Yeah. I expect her in future episodes, ladies and gentlemen. So today's her, her debut. So if nice. you're watching, congratulations. You are yeah. seeing magic in the making. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so I guess we could say that essentially the second half of the series kicked off with the jubilee episode i mean i think that's a fair enough assessment with that so yeah 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 uh which probably realistically was the only episode in the season i don't want to call it a standalone episode but it was one that gave just enough filler for the main plot line but really focused on kind of i guess the fun aspects of i mean the x-men arcade we talked kind of a bit before the show the x-men arcade intro was fantastic i think most of us can recall growing up and going to an arcade getting the four player arcade what was it It was colossus wolverine nightcrawler and jubilee cyclops was jubilee. yeah cyclops was in there too was no yeah. wasn't there was no gene gray no no i don't, I don't think so i think for some reason i want to say there was a beast uh option but i'm not sure of that um, I gotta see because I want to say that you can get the the original X Men arcade on either Xbox Game Pass or PlayStation. I can't remember which one, but I think it is available. Yeah, along with the a, 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 like a, a mini replica of the actual arcade game, you can actually buy it, build it yourself at you know at your home, and have like a you know a um, a classic arcade. For yeah. those of us that are well off, uh, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> build it if you have extra money and you'd like to buy us one. Yes. Uh, we would be more than happy to do a how to video set up and how to play. <laughs> um, and give but you yeah, a good that, review. 
<laughs> yes, yeah, yes. 100% we can. Um, yeah, no, that's, I mean, that's a classic arcade. And that, that was, again, that was the fun part of the episode. For me, that was probably my least favorite episode. Um, Jubilee, I think, is a good character, and there's a lot of potential. I just don't know if it was utilized as much this season, besides essentially being the person that gets Sunspot into the X-Men. I mean, and even then, he... I guess we should talk before we go any further that there is a, there are going to be spoilers left and right. Uh, <laughs> if you are if you are listening to this at this point, you are you better turn think- it off now and wait because um, that that's off the table. Um, yeah, I mean, it also was like uh, the first half. It was like like it was like um like the first half of the episode was was a Jubilee story, but then the second half of that same episode was a Storm story. They call it like it was yeah. like Jubilee and slash part one of. I don't remember the the, the second title of it, which was kind of interesting. You know, it was like um, telling two stories, two separate stories. You know, like you know, starting the first half of of this first story, you know, ending of Jubilee, and then finishing it off. You know, in the following episode. Um, which was, you know, like I've never seen anything done like that before. And, and it, it worked fine, you know, like it really yeah. didn't throw me off or anything, you know, but I, I was just um, surprised they went in that direction. No, I mean, it definitely worked out. Um, I was more surprised. And this is what I think I hated the most about Sunspot is you get brought in by Jubilee. Like you, you're on the outskirts, your family just, they really, they just kind of give you money and say, hey, don't be a mutant. And right. his first, his first instinct is like, you know what? Yeah, Magneto's awesome. I'm going to side with him. Which I yeah. guess makes sense because he really only knows Magneto's X-Men because obviously Charles was gone at that time, so it's not like he he knew, like, oh, I should probably listen to, the, you know, to Charles Xavier because um, obviously Magneto is the one that welcomed him in. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, I don't know if that was the best choice, but I was also kind of weird about the whole storm getting her powers back thing. I guess I do like the idea that kind of the mysticism behind her powers and whatnot and the black Panther, um, which was in the last episode. Uh, if you're watching, that if was, you were watching carefully enough, that was great. Um, I mean, that was, that was awesome. He never really got a chance in the, the original X-Men, the animated series. I think when we talked about it, um, he really only got a brief cameo in that first season. Such a small cameo. Yeah, like he's really like cra- crawling role. on the rocks um, as they're floating away from Wakanda. So mm-hmm. I am curious if this is going to be the time that we do possibly see a Black Panther Storm combo. I mean, that'd be great. You know, I, I mean, I've been so surprised of how many cameos we've gotten in, in 97. I mean, like from, from the other heroes, I did not expect so oh, many. Man. Like, I mean, I mean yeah. that last episode definitely showed quite yeah. a few. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, mean, Iron Man. I mean, Psylocke, Psylocke. Daredevil. Well, Psylocke. Psylocke uh, was Psylocke was in the beginning. Um, it morph transformed into her into the gotcha. uh, yeah the brawl. Um, not yeah. the real Psylocke, but he. Uh, and I think she was present in Genosha too. On uh, at the ball. Yeah, and I'm surprised how many how many characters uh, morphed morphed into that were not True. mutants. True. You know, there were other heroes like the Hulk. Um, the juggernaut, and Mr. Yeah. Fantastic, and the last one, you know, that was that, that was really awesome, you know. So, um, yeah, they're really um uh, taking advantage of like of like be able like to play with the whole um um toy box of, of Marvel, not even just like Marvel characters, but Marvel characters during the 90s period. Yeah, you we know? even saw Peter Parker and Mary MJ. Oh my god, yeah, that was <laughs> that was awesome. Iron Man, Iron Man. Not just any Steve. Iron Man, the '90s version Iron Man. Stephen Strange. Stephen, hold on. Operating. Operating. <laughs> I, I couldn't believe that. I couldn't believe I saw that. That was a huge surprise for me. Oh my gosh! I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm just so happy. You know, like I do remember again, like in the original uh, X Men um, series, they did have like some cameos. You know, like at, at either you know, something Spider-Man similar to this. Spider Man for sure had a cameo. Yeah, uh, but seeing all these other cameos and just it just uh, bumped it up. I, I really do hope like you know they, um, I I do want to see you know more cameos of course you no know, but but it done 
in a very good way that the way they've been doing, you know, like they don't overuse them, you know, um, the way when rogue met up with captain America, you know, um, that was cool. I do wish, you know, they would have had like a full episode, you know, of them teaming up together of him being like, yeah, let's go get this guy, you know, Trask, you know, and, um, I would have loved to have seen that, you know, like, um, and they obviously, you know, like, you know, like, okay, we'll go separate ways, you know, like, good luck to you, whatever. Um, but still, you know, it, it was great to see him, you know, it was again, amazing to see Spider-Man, you know, with Mary Jane, even Flash Thompson in the background, you know, yeah. oh my gosh, you know I mean? If, if this doesn't like get a revival of Spider-Man, um, 92 or 94 or, or when did Spider-Man the anime series came out? It was like 90, mm, I, I want to say 94, I think 95. More, I think it was yeah, more mid 90s. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I just, because they've been rumors, like if people are saying, oh, they should revive Spider Man. You know, I'm like, they got to do it. They got to do it now. Well, so, only time will tell. We'll yeah. have to see what comes up. Yeah. Uh, but I think um, this definitely an 87 definitely has it, gives it a good chance for them to do one if they decide to do. Yeah. Um, I guess which brings us to our main villain that really kind of took root in the second half, which is Bastion, uh, which Alejandro, you're not familiar with Bastion. He didn't, he didn't really play a major villain role till I guess we could say the late nineties to early two thousands. Um, and a lot of like the X, like the newer X-Men series he was, mm-hmm. and I can't remember the storyline he was involved, but he is a fusion of the master mold and Nimrod. Um, I was never a fan of the Sentinels to begin with. Um, like all the villain, I just like it's just they're Master overused Mold, a little bit. Master Mold and everyone like, like okay, you're you're techno organic, like okay, cool, like that. That's it. Like, like Bastion really had no powers except spreading, making everyone else a robot. Which like I, almost go. every every mutant has like enhanced strength and enhanced speed and durability. Like there wasn't I I don't know he just wasn't my because I I don't even know if I could call Bastion a villain as much as he's just an entity of two different things fused together, which again is Master Mold and Nimrod, um, which are really just two giant Sentinels, with Nimrod obviously being a lot more powerful. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know he was I, of all the villains they could have chose. Uh, he was probably, uh, he was probably my least part about the series. Um, I just, I really wish there was something else. Um, that's just me. I don't know how you guys felt about it. You know, I mean, it was really cool to see him, to be honest. Like, um, like, I mean, I kind of, I kind of was with you, you know, like, I mean, like it's the Sentinels are one of my favorite X-Men villains, but I feel like they've always been a little too much used, especially like in like, you know, media, you know, and stuff like that. And I wasn't too familiar with, um, with um bastion you know um so like so for me you know it, it was cool to see that you know, it was cool to see kind of like this advanced version of like the sentinels you know like um kind of like traveling back in time like you know to get rid of it it was almost took like a terminator type of <laughs> a, a type of way you know um so i didn't mind it as much because it was like a different version a different take on the sentinels than, than what i'm typically used to you know um you know, and then seeing him teaming up with Sinister um, was okay. You know, I guess like you know, like a, a means to an end. You know, um, but I mean, overall, you know, I didn't mind it. You know, because it was a character I just didn't know that much about. So, yeah, Alejandro, I don't know if you I think you might have enjoyed I, it more. I did, and I I don't know the history as much as you guys. Um, I think. I enjoyed that they came back up again because I think I'm trying to remember. I think in the first episode we see the Sentinels come up and then the X Men just do quick work of them like nothing, just right. Like it's just a normal Sunday football game for them, just easy workout. Um, I mean, yeah, you see them. I think is it in episode five where there's this big gigantic Sentinel that destroys of Genosha and. I'm really upset that Gambit did not make it past the rest of the season. I mean, he is one of my that, favorite was, characters. Um, I think the Triface Sentinel. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he. I mean, yeah. just making quick work of all 
all the mutants at Genosha and you know it takes Gambit to actually sacrifice his life to save what's what are whatever is left you know um so it was nice seeing that and then actually just seeing even like in a more advanced and even the x-men current x-men had a uh difficult time you know fighting against them um so like alex said you know it almost takes like a terminator twist um but for me i did enjoy the action and i'm also seeing how they brought the you guys are probably more familiar with it but uh the classic x-men suits too you know wolverine and the brown and yellow um always out. original yep yeah that was i mean that was like um the 70s version right yeah oh, they, yeah. they brought it back for yeah yeah for the last three episodes i yeah. mean wolverine wasn't even introduced i think in x-men i think his first appearance was in uh hulk i don't yes. think he had yeah he didn't even yes. have a first appearance in x-men no, no, yeah, I told right. His first appearance was in Hulk fighting the Hulk. Um, he was wearing a yellow costume, but then I think Jim Lee took over and and put him in the brown and red. Is it red or brown and like brown and like a gold. yellow? Brown, yeah, gold, gold, you know, yellow, yeah. mustard, mustard, yellow, yeah. whatever you want to classify it, right? Um, right, right, but yeah, no, I so. think the biggest thing with Bastion that they used was to introduce it for operation zero tolerance um which is a great storyline within the x-men i mean it's weird because i mean essentially the storyline is really just like the humans are tired of mutants and they finally are like all right we're kind of going third reich on everyone um which is essentially what the sentinels were made i mean to round up mutants put them in camps um Mm -hmm. Which I think is why you see Magneto have such a strong, I think when you look at why he has such a strong opposition and such a, like a hatred for what's going on, because I mean, he is a survivor of the Holocaust and this is essentially him reliving like the second worst years of his life. Yeah. 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 Which, you know, it was great seeing them finally like, you know, making his, um, like saying his name, Eric in the show. Where throughout the whole series it was Magnus, you know, for some reason, like you know, like they they just said his name was was Magnus, and it was a, a middle name, right? But they never acknowledged that in the original. So it's nice to see them bringing that, you know, like his his actual name into the show, you know, his name Eric, you know, and um, and kind of like you know him going to this backstory of like camps and tanks and i mean obviously not saying nazis or anything like that but if you know your x-men and at least you know if you've even seen the films you know you know mcneil's you know tragic backstory so yeah um yeah so i mean and one of the other things too that was needed for the sentinels that i think they used more as a jumping off point was cable um because obviously ca great. cable cable is a mutant yeah. with psychic abilities but those are he he's never ever able to use them, and I think that's what I didn't like about Deadpool two when they brought Cable in, is that they really don't like explain that, nor could they. I mean, it's a Deadpool movie, um, but Cable has psychic powers that he can never use because they're constantly using to keep the techno organic virus in his arm at bay so it doesn't take over his whole body, because he has a he has a child of uh, Scott and Jean. I mean he two powerful mutant parents that like he did inherit obviously the mutant gene mm -hmm. so is the metal arm the virus trying to take over his body then yeah always has oh, been okay. oh okay i yeah, thought he, he just he, had lost his arm and he had a robot arm for it no he was infected um i think it was mr sinister yeah i do remember that in the i know in, earlier in the season that he had infected him with something Mm -hmm. And then yeah, realized that that was uh, the metal armor's part of that infection. I think even in the comic books, that's where the the whole arm came from was the technical organic virus. Um, yeah, I think it was trying to take control just because he was again a powerful psychic, kind of like in the family. Um, now Alex's favorite part is when they had Magneto just you know hung up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that how'd, was... you, how'd you how'd you feel about sexy Magneto? I mean, I'm like, man, like if I get to be like a 90 
and look that good. I mean, like, you know, right on. I mean, he has to be a, a mutant, you know, to, to be 90 years old and be buff like that. I mean, come on. Hey, That's just, hey. you know. Pure hate and magnetism keeps that body <laughs> lean. <laughs> hey, you know what? I mean, it, it it's they made uh, McNeil a very compelling character in in this um in this um season show. Yeah, the season, you know, because like he tried. I mean, for sure, you know, I thought he was gonna like trick everybody and was gonna be like, no, you know, like look, I try, but I mean, like he he really literally did try. He was like, I try my best. They try to kill me in Genosha. This is the only way I can see us living, you know. So I mean, it's it's, I mean, like no, I mean, was he doing wrong? Of course, his actions were were wrong, but it's just so hard not to want to side with the guy. I, I to a degree, yes. Um, the last couple episodes, he kind of went back to his old, his old self. Uh. And you know, I think he probably allowed that because he saw Charles come back. Like, well, and, I mean, like, he yeah. and like, hey, I got a chance to walk in your shoes. You should walk in my shoes for a couple of minutes. And you have to have a villain. And like, obviously, he's always going to be a villain. Which, you know, speaking of, as Alejandro brought back, obviously, again, I guess I should say most of us knew that Charles was coming back because at the if you remember the end of the animated series, I think we talked about this on oh, yeah. our one X Men episode. Um, he was never going to die. Um, Lady Shiar, or I can't remember her. I'll never remember her name at all. Um, mm -hmm. Was said, I, I will take him to my home planet. It's completely curable, whatever he has. We're going to fix him. Just make up a story. Um, and that's, a, I mean, that's what happened. I, and we kind of knew when Charles was going to, was going to come back. It was more of a when and how. Mm -hmm. um, I am surprised at how long they did wait to actually just even say that he was alive and like address it, let alone bringing him back into the fold. Well, I mean, I guess they really wanted to focus a story on the team themselves and how they, you know, were, you know, like without, you know, like the aid of Charles Xavier. Right. And so that's going to take some time to show that, to see how you know, the consequences of, you know, like, of, of their own actions without the without the leadership of Charles, and you know to show, you know Charles himself, you know like look what happens when you know like you're, you know like, like because essentially he could have come straight home after he's cured, but he didn't. You know he wanted you know his a different life. You know he wanted you know to stay with his you know love or whatever you know, but. It's um, I mean, like having that time gap, I think was necessary, you know, in order to build up, you know, that emotional drama that came from when he, you know, discovers, you know, Gambit's death and his realization that he needs to come back home. So. Yeah, I mean, the best part of that episode was when he like didn't tell anyone and like he just sent out the psychic message, like "Come to me, my X Men," and like they're just like, "What?" Yeah. I am surprised, though, at how much they literally, like, cried tears as he was going to be cured. Like, he, he wasn't going to die. Like, they literally, like, all cried. Um, and, like, he comes back to, like, mm, I don't know if I trust you, old man. I think they were just bitter because they're, like, you know, oh, like, because he was gone for so long, I think, in the show, right? They're, like, you know, so you're cured, right? And you didn't bother coming back. Like what? What took you so long? You know, well, you gave us the Nino part. instead. <laughs> yeah, well, and that's the crazy part too. They didn't really like explain to us how we are supposed to connect the dots time wise. Because we start at the beginning of the season, they're like, "Oh, Charles Xavier was just murdered." Yes, and right. then literally six episodes later, they're like, "Genosha fall." Like all these things happen. They're like, "Oh, okay, Charles coming back." Am I to believe this happened within a month? Like. What's my timeline here? That's a good point. I mean, like, I took it as, like, he's been gone for, like, a while. But you're right. Like, at the beginning of the show, you know, they it, it was almost like, they, like the episode started, like, right after he Correct. left. So he could have been gone for maybe, you know, a month. Maybe. T I mean, I mean well, we don't I know how long, you know, each episode is in between. So. Well, I think you could say at least probably nine months. That's all it takes to have baby Cable. 
I don't know if Jean was pregnant at the end of the last season for the original X Men. Oh, that's true. So uh, you got at least a year. Yeah, I there's so many there's a lot of questions there. Um so I think yeah. it's safe to say at least he was gone a year. Give or take. Yeah. Um, I am curious that we went, I guess as we get closer to the end of these episodes, I'm more curious that we went back to Asteroid M. Because I could have sworn Asteroid M got blown up in the animated series, the original. I don't remember. I gotta be honest. I don't remember. the. Okay, um... Maybe Magneto had a backup like the Death Star. Have two. Uh, I, you know, it's Alejandro always <laughs> defending the villain. <laughs> I'm just saying, I mean, uh, you know, I mean, it was like, what was also McNeil's plan? Like, was his plan? Cause like, obviously he, you know, this electromagnetic field that was going to put the earth into darkness and stuff like that. But then he lifted up asteroid M was his plan to like round up the resident mutants and be like, Hey, come live with me. Or like, what was like his, like, what was his plan ultimately for having Asteroid M? You know, like, I mean, because I, because his plan wasn't to like throw it back onto the Earth. That was no. Sebastian, um, you know. I think realistically, his plan was to leave Earth, and like all of the normies, um, like in total darkness, without power, without anything, kind right. of like you know, enjoy your life. With nothing, like devolve and destroy yourself as me and my mutants who were advancing mankind or whatever we were doing with our powers now take leave. And like, um, so sort of, of like we, a survival of the fittest. Kind of, like yeah. Die, I think, to me, that seemed to be his. Yeah, but did he need to lift up the asteroid for that then? Like, why couldn't he just I stay mean, on Earth? Like I, I mean, did this, like, in this castle in this asteroid. Like you now left Earth. Like there's no one to come and save you. Like we're not saving you anymore. Like you have an okay. earthquake that's gonna flood. Like that's on you now. That's not on us. So he was gonna like take all the mutants then with him. Like, um, I, I mean, think like, those that wanted to join him. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Like they never really made that clear. That uh, that um, that that's what I'm saying. Like you know. Uh, I mean, like, I think I mean, maybe it was just an. A spur of the moment anger issue just yeah yeah i yeah and, i mean i and i guess that what well, yep no no go ahead go ahead no you go no no i, I was going to change i was going to talk about something else so yeah. let, let's let's finish talking about the asteroid so well i was going to say the biggest thing that came from the asteroid i mean and everyone to talk about it and that is uh wolverine getting the adamantium ripped from him um oh, yeah. i know we talked oh, about no, alejandro um, that was probably the most shocking point for you. Like I said, I watched it like, was... oh, okay, finally, it happened. <laughs> so you were expecting it, is that what you're telling me? Uh, like, it's always been in the back of my mind, like it could happen, because there's been twice uh, where it's happened. Once where Magneto's actually pulled the skeleton from his flesh, oh. like his whole like skeleton out, um, and then... And there's been times where he's definitely like bent Wolverine, like this isn't the first time. But the biggest one, the biggest comic takeaway was when this did happen in the comics, because that was the first time you learn that Wolverine is a true mutant, that the adamantium was not what like gave him his mutant powers. Um that it was bone claw, like it was all bone. Like that was mm -hmm. kind of the mutant power to a degree. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. the best thing is when they did this, this is kind of when Wolverine went back to like basic basic survival. Uh because technically he's a lot stronger, but the adamantium was always killing him slowly. Yeah, right, he, yeah. Yeah, you know, and so his body was constantly trying to regenerate itself, you know, to to push back the adamantium. But now that it no longer has that, like it, he can be fully regenerated. Along with his other abilities, I guess like um, he'll have like super strength now, right? Something like that. Well, like, they mean, said like, he would be like stronger. He would be faster. He technically I mean, could like a lot of weight. <laughs> he could technically, yeah, he could technically recover from wounds possibly quicker. The problem was even in the comic books is the poison and the adamantium had done so much damage to him. It, this kind of state that he was left in and unfortunately 
him, Storm, and Morph are one of the few at the end of this season. We truly don't know what happened to him, uh, which we'll address a little bit later on. But they're one of the they're, they're the three we really don't have any idea. Wait, wasn't Storm and showed up back in time? No, nope. um, no. Oh, okay, uh, I, no, I don't think so. No. no. Okay. Okay. Those are the only three we don't actually have. Uh, we're just assuming. Um, but yeah, Wolverine kind of goes through. He goes through a weird time um, during this transition. Um, but probably not for long. And that is because the best part of this episode was the after credit scene. Yes. Uh, right. Alejandro, I hope you watched it or you were... I did not. Were, I tried to look for it and fast oh forward. My, I, didn't see, I did oh, not see any after credit. Alejandro, you saw the apocalypse ending. Yes. All right. Well, that's kind of the after credit scene where he gotcha. goes to the no show. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because obviously everyone knows as if you watch the X-Men, the animated series is apocalypse always picks four, four mutants to be his horsemen of the apocalypse. Mm-hmm. Um, here's where it gets interesting for me is the horsemen of death. There has been five very powerful X-Men that have been the horsemen of death. Storm, Wolverine, Professor X, Gambit. There's one more, and I can't remember it. Um, but here's where for the, I think it's the most interesting is number one. This could re, this could return Gambit to to being back on the show. Mm-hmm. This could I completely mean, resurrect him and bring him back. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, I mean, I mean, that's where the definite leading when he picks up you know Gambit's card. But so. where it gets interesting is when Wolverine who is the second iteration of the Horseman of Death, he had to fight for that position to become a horseman. After having the adamantium ripped from his bones, he had to fight an adamantium-infused saber-tooth, oh. which he defeated. And it, for his reward, Apocalypse rips the adamantium from Sabretooth and re-imbues Wolverine with adamantium. And that's how he gets his adamantium back. Hmm. That they could do cool. that. I mean, they could do that. I mean, I mean and, it wouldn't surprise me. And that's where I bring up the interesting part because if you were listening at the very end to the radio TV as they were talking about the state of affairs between humans and mutants, they talk about the humans are starting to side with this new politician leader who's like friends of the people called Graydon Creed. And for those that are not familiar, Graydon Creed is the son of Sabretooth and Mystique, who leads a political uh, kind of like Reich against the mutants to exterminate them all before Mystique comes back in time and puts a bullet in his head. Wow. See, I wasn't too familiar with that, to be honest. I mean, son of a you Marvel expert. I know. I know. I know. I, I'm so, it's such a shame. Such a shame, but there's so much lore with the X Men in itself, you know, and yeah. uh, and and that's what the what's great about the show is like they pretty much were pulling everything, you know, uh, well, from 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 all the lore. I mean, I mean they can they can pull everything, you know, from yeah. you know. So, so I guess uh, that's my curi- my my question. I think even more to you guys is like if they had to pick one, obviously you, you could do like Wolverine and Gambit being resurrected fix at the same time like i mean no one's gonna really argue it and i think you have to bring gambit back at this point um but if they had to say like run a contest who picks one do you would you rather see wolverine get adamantium back or gambit back Oof, that's gonna be a tough one i i, I think, think i'll probably go with gambit for me personally um i know wolverine is a popular character um and again you know he takes most in the movies you know he's just that popular but i think it'd be nice to just see something different so for me my vote would be for gambit i don't think wolverine's dead though he's not dead but like he's definitely not as powerful to that extent because as we know adamantium's unbreakable unless you're going up against other adamantium yeah and that was a major influence to some degree, I mean, they can change it to. I mean, they can add like, 
Gambit. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, they can add Gambit, Wolverine, Storm, and Morph to be the next Horseman, you know. And um, I mean, rather that be more for Storm, the who can't be the Horseman, whatever. Um, but they like, like either Wolverine or Gambit could be Death, you know. And you know, like in in this version of the X Men, um, like I mean, like it it doesn't have to be like one or the other. It can no, just be yeah, like Alex. You know, don't give me your political answer. I said one <laughs> or the other. You're trying to get both the best of both worlds. You can't I have am. it. I am. No, I am. You get to pick one. You get to pick one. Ah. Do you make Wolverine deadlier? You put him back to full, like where nothing stops him. Mm -hmm. Or do you bring Gambit back to life? But then he'd be working for Apocalypse. No, because when Gambit was could be brought back to life, because Wolverine, when they found out that Wolverine was an Apocalypse, uh, the horse of death, they undid the brainwashing and brought him back. So technically, Gambit could be, you know, undone the brainwashing from Apocalypse. You get to pick one or the other. We've never seen Wolverine as a bad guy. You son of a gun! We've never <laughs> you seen get him. one or the other. I I would I would bring. Oh man! <laughs> oh. I, I'll bring back Gambit. I bring back, oh I, wow! I like Way to go with the safe answer. <laughs> Gambit, fine. What about it's you, fine. Ryan? Oh, for sure. I it, the adamantium claws. I just I don't. I would not want to watch a season where Wolverine's just moping around with his little bone claws and just <laughs> like I just I don't want to see it. Which well, that's the weird thing too about. So I guess we could say the way that things ended is they did stop. They stopped Bastion. They put the collar on him. Kind of at least got rid of his influence over the Sentinels and the techno organic virus. Uh, they stopped Sinister. Um, but during like the fight, Asteroid M, I got blown up because we had launched, uh, what was it nukes towards That's Asteroid M? Yeah. The whole so thing. it was a lot. So it blew up. X Men can't be found. And then we go to different sections. Now, Gene and Scott get blasted into the future where it's like a Planet of the Apes thing, whole world's destroyed. And yeah. they come across, uh, they come across a young uh, Nathan Nathan Gray, who we know is going to become Cable. And then the biggest thing, for those that don't know, is I think her name was Mother, at least the name there was Mother Iraqi, Iraqi or whatnot, who was taking care of Nathan Gray. That's a big deal because that is an alternate future timeline of their daughter. Oh, yeah. Uh, who also specializes in psionic abilities and time manipulation. And there was a comic book called Phoenix and Scott or Scott and the Phoenix, uh, where like somehow like telepathic versions of both of them went to the future to raise cable. So now we get to kind of see like what they finally get their family life essentially at the end of the episode, realistically. Uh, they get to have, you know, the sun, they're together. Uh, it's just that the world itself has been destroyed. Uh, so that's one end. And to in the other end, which I'm, I'm really curious because it was Beast, Xavier, Rogue, Magneto. I think that all get blasted to the past. Um, and they yeah. help they help fight uh, and I really can't remember Apocalypse's name. It's way too long. And so I'm just calling it Apocalypse. Sure, we'll <laughs> Like Wait, do they have fight Apocalypse or fight with him? Because they save him. Like they save him. Well, that's like, the thing, and that's what makes it very weird is they they see him being outflanked uh, by seven people, like a seven to one, which makes sense because um, again, he's back in ancient Egypt and he's a mutant. Like he's the first. I mean, that's that's what his name means. I think was like the origin or the original one. Um, right. So like this is like the first mutant. So obviously, so they go in to help him. Now, this is more interesting because obviously we know from X-Men, the animated series, we've seen uh, Age of Apocalypse. Like, they did Age of Apocalypse in the original series. Mm -hmm. And Apocalypse going back to Genosha and starting to resurrect his horsemen, it seems like we're kind of getting a do-over on an Age of Apocalypse-esque. Uh, yeah, but at what point be. is their meddling now in the past going to influence the future? 
or wow. I mean, okay. could you know how Gene? Don't you attack mine? Probably. Could be. Well, you know how Gene and Scott are kind of like they're in an alternate timeline right now, right? Or alternate universe. We're assuming that, yes. Right. Well, what if you no know, Charles and the rest of the gang are also in an alternate universe, just in the well, past? I guess, I guess that's the hard part too, is we so, really don't know if one versus the other is in a true timeline or they're both out of timelines. Um yeah. That unfortunately we are not privileged to know until God knows when. Um right. now I am curious with what the uh is since we don't know, I think what happened to Storm, Morph, and Wolverine is are we also going to get a possible like do over esque on a Days of Futures past with Wolverine and everything? Which is know. a possibility. I mean, I mean, like to go back to the Sentinels again. I mean, for the second season. Would be okay, but it's like we spent the whole season pretty much them being the main focused. It would be great if, like, the, I mean, there was like a new bad guy. I mean, yes, we have Apocalypse, and we know he's one of the major bad guys. But I would love to see, like, the other villains of the X-Men that haven't gotten a chance to make it on screen. Well, I have a feeling you know? Sabretooth has to make an appearance in Mystique. Because, like I said, Great and Creed is their child. Yeah. No, no, no. I, I mean, I mean, they can come back, but I'm talking about like ones that we haven't even seen yet, like, like the like the Shadow King. I don't think he was, you know, in the last, or like the one villain. I forget his name, but he looks like kind of like techno. He looks like a techno virus, you know, like and or maybe that maybe that's a hero. I I I'm not sure. But like um, the, I mean, I know there's a lot more of the villains that they can explore, you know, and uh, besides just the uh, you know the ones. That yeah. We've so. I mean, I, I, I think it's going to depend. It. I mean, if they do another ten episodes, it's what can we cram in ten episodes, where everybody still understands what's going on, mm -hmm. and make it make sense. Well, the hardest part is, I think part of the success that comes from season one is Bo DeMeo who made the show and obviously he was fired after like season episode two before the even season even finished. He was let go from the project. Um, so now we're kind of, we're, we're set to get a season two probably, but we don't have him kind of being the showrunner for the season two. So I am more curious there. Is that going to change the outcome? That, that could be it also. I mean, I mean, they could hire him back. I mean, you know, I don't think they will. Whatever happened, and unfortunately, I mean, there's a lot of speculation, so I don't even want to, <laughs> don't even want to yeah. cross why. Right, right. But out of all the things, Disney's very vocal when they cut ties with someone. The reason why they cut ties with someone, mm -hmm. um, no one has said anything about why. No, I think Bo DeMeo went on the Twitter and issued like how he he's happy with his work and stuff, and like. You know, it's regrettable, like, that he no longer gets to be, like, a part of, like, what he helped build. But neither have come out and said, like, an official, like, statement. Um, so, I don't know. I mean, I think that's part of the success we have with this, this show is he, you look at his Instagram, he seems to be a pretty genuine fan of X-Men. Right, right. Um. I mean, you know, I mean, they have the producers and they have the writers that worked on the show, so they yeah. can always like like lean lean on them, you know, in a way of like, or maybe like Bo had like he had like um like an outline of like season two would have happened, and of course, you know, like they have that, you know, they have those notes that they can just refer back to, you know, unfortunately, you know, and they may not need, you know. Um, his permission or, you know, or to bring it back, you know, because they have those, those production notes, you know, so sometimes, unfortunately, it's unfair. You know, he puts all this work into and all this work into a, a potential season two, and then they, they let him go for what, what reason, but, you know, but who knows, who knows? So I mean, I'm hoping, you know, season two, you know, uh, is going to be good. You know, it will continue to amaze us, you know, and, and make us, you know, um, you know, giddy as season one has. So, 
Um, I'm hoping we're going to get to see more from some characters that did still didn't get the screen time. Uh, Beast, again, got pushed to the side. I mean, even when you watch the original X-Men animated series, he got captured like the first couple episodes and like literally was like, nah, I'm cool. I'm just going to stay in prison. Uh, you know, yeah, but he, I mean, he here. has... I mean, he had a couple of great ep- uh, moments, though. I mean, like, I mean, he definitely yeah. knows how to reprogram a Sentinel, you know. And uh, so that's his thing. But yeah, it'd be great to have like a a, a um, a- and then the like, key he had like almost like a re- romantic relationship with a reporter, you know. Um, that that was a, a nice to see, you know. Um, his like his personal side, besides his his scientific, you know. Um. And you know he's kind of like he's kind of like Forge, and the both of them are brilliant. You know, uh, maybe they can team up and like come up with like some solution for some problem. You know, well, for season two. So, I guess the other biggest thing too is if Apocalypse recreates his Horseman, will he raise Genosha? Because Genosha that day you lost a fair amount. The Morlocks um, mm-hmm. all got wiped out. Uh, Sebastian Shaw. Um, someone said possibly Psylocke. I did not uh, pay enough attention, um, so I'm not sure if she was for sure there um, or not. Well, no, because she made it at the end of the episode. And that's where, again, it gets so... That's the one thing I don't like about having Morph there. It makes It, it gets very tricky. <laughs> like, is, is he actually there? Like, is he that person? Is it a scroll? Like, too many, Ooh, too many shapes. <laughs> well, the scroll, the, the scroll can always be a threat, and the scroll, they're always lingering there. Yeah. Now, which is a possibility? I mean, that is definitely a season two possibility. Yeah, I think they would reserve that. I don't know. I mean, the the scrolls have been used already in the MCU. Yeah. And they're like, they're like refugees, which is fine, you know. But like for us, the scrolls were always bad guys, and they weren't just bad guys. They were like, 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 like a real honest threat, you know, like, like to the Marvel universe. So if they wanted to bring those characters into, um, into the X Men universe, I mean that's fine, you know. That that'd be like another villain. That'd be like a cosmic, you know, like um, that'd be the X Men being involved not just in Earth's, you know, like issues, but. Now they're involved like in a cosmic level, you know, which would give like a whole new type of you know depth to the um, X Men uh, franchise, you know. I mean, like, besides the whole thing with the Phoenix, you know, and that's gonna be a little overdone too, you know. Um, uh, I, I did guess, like that they brought it back in the one episode. She yeah, kind of tapped into it, but it didn't right. like consume the entire thing. Right, right. Like she's able to somewhat control it or guide it, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, how did you guys feel about the reveal of like war morph, you know, love for Logan? What do you mean? How do we feel about it? I told you in the very first episode. <laughs> I know, I know you did. I know I didn't, I didn't believe you. I, Gr- I didn't granted, believe you. <laughs> granted, it might be more one sided. Yeah. But like I think it's fair to say, because even when you look at the new Mystique storyline, if you read X Men Blue. I do want to read that. Our though. Blue Destiny, and it's coming yeah. out for Pride Month um, in June as one of the main covers and storylines is, uh, you know, the other wedding of a century, which Mystique is finally marrying Destiny. Um, I think it's it makes sense for those people that like Morph and Mystique who they don't have, I mean, they have a gender, but like they don't have a gender or even kind of like an identity well mystique i guess has an identity and it's just finding like who she really is where morph really doesn't have that sense of like i am morph it's just whoever i want to be with my own feelings like he's not and it kind of shows like in his character like look this whole season with just like the plain white like face. kind of face yeah. that like he he's a person like he has his own feelings, but he's not like tied down to one look, whether it be male or female. No. So yeah, I one hundred percent. That's why I told you when we reviewed this the first episode. I said, <laughs> I don't know. He's kind of he's 
doing a little weird roughhousing with Wolverine. <laughs> and you're like, no, that's not going to happen. Yeah, I, I didn't want to believe it, but, you know. I don't know. I, for me personally, I didn't really read too much into it. I think, obviously, we know Wolverine has a big crush, love interest in Jean Grey. And I think we even saw that in maybe episode two or three when he did kiss, kiss the actual Jean Grey. Um, I think he, he could have had the Goblin that. Queen. Madeline so think, Pryor was right there. You could have. Yeah. You could have. Um, but I think for more, I think it was just trying to give him a reason to live. Uh, I can't you know, think it was Jean Grey. I would agree with you, but like the show creator um, went on publicly to say, yes, more that that was more confessing his love to Logan. You know, that's the, mm-hmm. you know, and um, first, uh, let me say, I'm so happy they took away the creepy laugh from Morph. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm so happy they no longer have that in this one because that always creeped me out. If they would have kept it and, like, he would have, like, done the after said, I love you, Logan. <laughs> that would have been, like, been creepy. I mean, it would have been interesting. I would have watched it. <laughs> Would have been funny as hell. <laughs> so I'm super happy they they took it out. But like, yeah, no, I, you know, like, uh, I, I feel like you know, it gives you know another depth to to morph. Um, I I do feel bad for him though because he knows that like Logan's feelings are always going to be for sure a one sided. Yeah, it's always going to be for for um, for Jean Grey. But I mean, I, I I do like it gives morph kind of like a another layer to him. You know, so so I mean, I, I'm totally cool with it. Well, I guess the and the crazy thing, I don't, even, I can't believe we didn't discuss this. Is actually, I think the biggest villain was laid out right in front of us in the final two episodes. Alejandro probably doesn't know who it is, but you should definitely know who it is. Um, I'm trying. Dun, 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 to, dun. I'm trying to think. Which, which it was a very pivotal about. moment in the second to last episode that happened. That gave birth to like the one of the biggest villains. Oh, you Marvel fan. I uh, <laughs> sorry, man. I was trying to rewatch the episode before I started this show to make sure I didn't miss anything. Um, it wasn't in the final episode. Well, it had to do with some of those things in the final episode. Okay. Okay. Then bigger, people bigger regular humans were the what? worst of our kind. What the the samurai like the silver samurai? What what like? when Charles Xavier shut down in the comic books, Magneto's mind, the darkest urge and form of all of his thoughts, entered into Charles's head, and just like how his sister was born, who we'll see in Deadpool three, uh, this gave birth to the enemy known as Onslaught which was such a powerful form of dark emotion from Magneto. It formed with Charles Xavier's uh, psionic telepathic powers. And Onslaught was like this almost like mechanized version of like Magneto that came out that had complete mastery of all of Magneto's powers and magnetism and Charles Xavier's powers. Wow. His name was Onslaught. It, I mean, are you saying like it's a setup for... For sure. I mean, for sure. Because okay. uh, the first time that Charles Xavier went into Magneto's mind to officially shut him down into a coma, mm-hmm. which is what happened, like as like Magneto came back, like that dark part of his mind got left in Charles's mind. And it was so powerful. It copied his powers with Magneto's and made its own person into this oh. world. They could bring that back in the second season. I mean, that could, you know what? I, I mean, like, because he's a, he's a, that is a, a powerful enemy. I mean, that would be kind of cool, like, to bring up, like, maybe at the end of season two, have on Onslaught versus Apocalypse. I mean, that would be uh, kind of. I don't see, I don't think you'd see that. Why? I mean, I, I think that'd be great. I think, I think that'd be like a surprise, you know? Uh, like, this is like something. Power, you got two powerhouses, though, then trying, like, and then, like, one of them would have to die. Like, well, yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, you don't. Now, does you, this onslaught character take in 
take over Charles or Magneto's body, or is this no? Like it literally, when it was in Xavier's mind, he was like so powerful, like in his emotions, he literally formed his own form of like living, and became real. Same thing, like I said, same thing with uh, Cassandra Cain, who is uh, uh, what's his uh, Xavier's sister, who's in Deadpool Mm three, and who's got. Like, she's not, like, a real twin of Xavier. Like, she's literally, like, a manifested, like, part of, like, like again, the telepathic. And, like, kind of hated Charles Xavier for, like, choking her out in the womb, like, <laughs> telepathically. That she carried so much hate and anger, like, she literally willed her way into existence. Wow. Yeah, I don't know if we'll see that in the, in the film. But, I mean, you never know. It could. It could happen. Uh, but, yeah, so Onslaught to me would be the way to go. Um, at the beginning of the season or towards the end? I mean, two? you could you could save it. Like, it's definitely a season three type thing you could save. Because okay. uh, mm-hmm. you really don't want to bring it in, like, halfway through through the season. That would be, to me, it would be a little waste wasted. Um, he, like I said, he's a. Uh, he, there's a lot of power. Like he, I mean, he's almost godlike. Yeah, yeah. So like, you. again, you really don't want to have two, kind of two godlike people going at it because I mean, like I said, it's got to end in one one of them winning versus the other. Yeah, I mean, I could see him like being reserved for season three. You know, like I, I, again, that'd be like a villain we haven't seen yet. You know, and that'd be kind of—I mean—that'd be really cool to to have them, um, you know, be explored. So I think that'd be really great. Yeah. Now, are there any other cameos are you guys hoping to see in that we haven't seen yet in the next uh, upcoming seasons? I mean, like oh. the old X Weapon X program. Would yeah. be great if you saw like Deadpool, uh, Lady Shiva, Omega Red. Yep, yep, those um, are good. Yep, that'd be really cool. Especially if Wolverine got blasted to the past, I think that's the easy, easy thing to do. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, having seeing Deadpool in a in the anim, in the X Men anime series would be great. Um, for me, maybe another team up with Spider Man. You know, with the same voice actor, <laughs> nope. did, I mean that. I mean that'd be great. You know, like another nope. uh, part two. Retire it. Uh, <laughs> I mean, who else? The Avengers, maybe. I mean, yeah, you. I don't know. Just for and one to episode. Me that'd be, to me, that'd be a cop out. I mean, it would be more for fan appeal at that point. Like, you could. I guess, but then, like, why? Like, what? What's drawing them in? Right, because the Avengers never really fought like Apocalypse, oddly enough. At least not that I'm aware of. Like I don't recall any storylines, but which is weird because they take the Avengers are there to essentially defend Earth from big level like threats. Um, Mm -hmm. Apocalypse seems like one of those, Um, but maybe they just figured the X Men always had it contained. Right, right. I am curious if Mister Sinister will come back. Because he was essentially kind of destroyed esque by Cable. I think Cable and Jean Grey. I can't remember exactly. I think a combination of the both, or I think mostly Phoenix. I think yeah, the the, the Phoenix. Yeah, because yeah. she took out all his like mutant DNA. Yeah, and like he lost his like longevity and yeah, he looked pretty like old. That. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, but it, yeah. And again, he's one of those characters like especially with the new X-Men and like the sins of sinister storyline and everything. It's very hard to say it wouldn't surprise me if he made another comeback. Um, you know, the brotherhood, the brotherhood, um, like I said, we really haven't seen, and there's no saber tooth, you know, toad. I mean, mm-hmm. the blob, a juggernaut. Right. right. Um, because the X-Men are back to being enemies. Yeah, yeah, they are. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're back. 
I think I would kind of like to see. I mean, I I don't know. I mean, what do you guys think? Would you like to see the Hulk, the actual Hulk? No. In- um. I don't know. I feel like it just feels forced. I mean, I, don't know. I mean, I don't know how you would. Well, because him and there. him and Wolverine, you know, like they they don't get along, and uh, they have a history. So it could be like you know, like like a flashback, or maybe it could be like you know, like like they have unfinished business or something, you know, or like Bruce Banner is trying to get help, but Wolverine doesn't trust him, and something like that. You know, maybe they can. They, they, they can find some other way. I don't know. It's hard to say because there's a lot of story you could tell that's just X Men centric at this point. Um, yeah. And I guess again, the point. I guess the point of the show is, what's your end goal? Are you looking again to do more kind of like retconning and like getting more of the old fans of the X Men the animated series back into like, you know, we're doing this for you, or are you gonna try to go maybe a more of a new route? To get new fans, but still try to put things in there for like the old fans to enjoy. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. What do you think, Alejandro? I. Ooh, it's hard. I think personally for me, I just whichever direction I think will be fine. Um. Nope. No, mm-hmm. Ryan. Don't you say that, Alejandro. Ryan. <laughs> and again, the only re- reason I say that is because I am not familiar with the comics. So whatever story they feed me, show me, I'm probably gonna enjoy it. Yeah. I yeah, think like I said. Yeah. Oh yeah, go. No, no, no. I think they should definitely keep sticking with the comics, you know, like 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 pulling from the lore, you know, um, because like yeah. they they did I mean it, it's been great. You know, like they, they, they I mean, uh, they're able like to to take so much, and like, and for people like you and I who read the comics, who who know like those iconic, you know, images and stuff like like, like of that of like like the one where McNeil was in handcuffs and he just wore like his like M Shaw Shaw or whatever he was wearing. You know, that was great. More of that, more of that. You know, you you give me more of that. You know, you you'll make me happy. So no, you get more of Magneto. <laughs> Strung up. <Dang. laughs> well, what about seeing Magneto's kids? I know they made like a very, very brief appearance. I think like in the memory. Um, but what about yeah, seeing well, either Wanda or Quicksilver? Well, that's a hard part because as soon as you introduce those, I feel like you have to do House of M. Yeah, but on Forge's like X Men board, he has at the end of the series. I mean, at the end of the season, you know, like where, like, you know, they say, like, missing, you know, presumed dead or something. You see Wanda and and uh, Pietro on there, and it, on their pictures, it says off world. Yeah. What wow. does that mean, off world? Are they, like, literally, no. like, on another planet? Are they in another dimension? Like, like why are they off world? Like, <laughs> you know, uh, and I don't think they were ever introduced. Was Quicksilver Wanda ever introduced in the mm-hmm. original? Maybe, maybe Wanda. I can't really remember. Okay, I mean, it'd be great to have them. I mean, those those are X Men's kids. I mean, those are um, McNeil's kids. You know, so to yeah. have them, you know, maybe they'll maybe they'll be run the brother of mutants. You know, maybe they'll be the next ones. So that's how we will get those characters to be introduced. Um. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I again, I just I was really happy with this to see. I mean, it, it took me completely by surprise. So, yeah, I mean, I would say, what does everyone rate this season? But I think we can all agree this is a 10 out of 10 uh, out of the park. I don't think there was, yeah, <laughs> I really don't think we'd be like, oh, well, kind of a nine at this point. Like, I really, I don't really don't see any flaws in any. I mean, if anything, a solid nine, 9.5, I would say. Okay, and 9.5. I mean, you want to be an outlier. That's on you. That's okay. Uh, Was it perfect? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, I, I I was, I was really happy with it. You know, I mean, I mean, again, like the Jubilee episode. Even I liked the Jubilee episode, and that 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 episode was fine for me. I mean, it it didn't need to like, like, have this huge connection, you know. And it still had a huge connection because of the whole storm, you know, storyline. 
uh but just <laughs> but just seeing i'm telling you man just seeing that x-men arcade in <laughs> you know and having you know like um ne- like the references of nintendo in yeah. there you know and uh like like for me that the the just was like a uh, great nostalgia you know it, it was great it took me back to you know going to the arcade and playing the X-Men <laughs> game. And, and uh, I mean, it, it was really great for them to like harken back to that because it was, it was such a big part of like our, you know, our childhood and like, and the people who watched the show, they know that there was a big part of their childhood too. So for sure. Yeah. All, All right, right Alex. Yep. Um, who is Forge? I don't really know much about him, but oh. he did seem kind of like an important character. Well, season, so. well, Forge is the leader of X Factor. Yes, and X Factor is a mutant group um, made by the U.S. government. Um, so, like, it's the U.S. government's version of the X Men, but they work for the United States. You know, oh, okay. and, not to be confused with X Force, which yeah. is also a military organization within the X Men for all the brute people. That we could see more of, since technically there's no X Men left except for Cable, right, right. So, but these are X Factor, and okay. uh, and and Forge was the leader of X Factor, and pretty much you know he's described how he is in the TV show, super smart, um, super tech savvy. You know he invents things like his new power is inventing new technology. You know. Okay. And you know, and also you know, adding it to his body and stuff like that. So he's he's a little bit of a cyborg, like you know, kind of like how Cable is. Um, apart from that, I, I'm not too familiar with him. Be, again, basically from what I've seen on the show and you know and stuff like that, and from what I, from a little I've read in the comics. So anything else you want to add, Ryan? No, I mean he's yeah, I mean he's lastly been in a lot of wars, um, being kind of part of X Factor. Um, he's lost a lot of limbs, which is why he's replaced them. Um, and he's, and he's done again. He kind of like, he, it wouldn't surprise me if you saw like him in like Tony Stark, because he knows Tony Stark. Cause I think in some of the, some of the stories and whatnot, he's actually met with Tony Stark and has, uh, like helped him design like weapons or like defense strategies for. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, his biggest thing is, uh, is inventing like that's, that is his mutant ability, but like on a superhuman level, uh, kind of like if you took Tony Stark and then like amped him up, like a little <laughs> bit, like that's, that's his mutant okay. power. Like you could put him in a room with like scrap metal and buttons and like somehow he'll make a power suit. Um, I can dig that. Yeah, I mean, and he's been known to dabble in the mystic arts, but he like realistically prefers like kind of working with technology. Yeah, that's like the, that's definitely his um his forte. Um, I don't know if he's been that big. I mean, was he like a huge character? No, that, I wouldn't you know? say he was like a standalone, like someone that stands out or anything like. Yeah. That. But he's a he's he's a staple. I mean, I would say like he is a staple of the mutant, of the X Men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. So. So that was um, it for me. I, I mean, I don't know if you guys have any other additional comments about the season. Waiting for season two. Yeah, yeah, me too. Me too. I can't wait. Um, I hope like uh, are there any other storylines? I mean, I guess my only one more question I had is like, is there any other storylines? Um, I know m- maybe you might not know this, Alejandro, but like uh, for Ryan, like the, the exit stories that you have read, you know, like is there any that you would wish to see them adapt, you know, for House, um, I mean, House of M, like that's House of M, the fact that we've had House of M and we have no animated movie or show to depict one of the best storylines ever is insane to me. Okay, All right. well, I, mean, I mean, that could happen. That could very it happen. Should. You know? It should. Yeah, I mean, now, do you want it to be like on an X Men based? Because like that involved the whole M, like the Marvel universe. But the best storyline was X Men centric House of M. Well, yeah, but but you had like 
Spider Man. You had like Captain America in there. You had Listen, like. Other... I know you really want Spider Man to I'm come just... into this, okay? <laughs> I'm just saying, I mean, like to have House of M and not have the rest of the Marvel. Nope, that's fine. You, know... you don't need the rest of them. Okay. All right. All right. You just don't need Spider Man. Nope. No Peter Parker. All right. All right. Well, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, I, lo- I do love House of M myself. So I yep. really do hope, you know, we can see that. Uh, maybe a. Um, the atomic age or something i mean I, it's another storyline that, that that i read um but yeah no i'm i'm, I'm like um but I'm, I'm pretty happy with uh with where we have and i hope we, we get more so all right anyone else no but i'm all, all good yes sir all right well i hope everyone's had a good time listening and if you are on youtube watching the video Hope you had a great time listening and watching us with our new mascot, Ginger, <laughs> in the background, faithfully sleeping, just listening oh, to the sure fun. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I'll be on the lookout for the next new episode wherever you get your podcast and on our YouTube channel. You can find all of that by just searching Beyond the K Podcast. Everyone, have a good night. Have a good night, everyone. Good night, everybody. <laughs>